In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to make an easy zip bag. This video is intended to accompany the Greyfriars and Grace Easy Zip Bag tutorial that's available to purchase from our website or Etsy shop. These bags make great presents and it's even better if you can use recycled fabric. Step 1. Choose your zip and fabrics. See the written tutorial for the size of the zip required. The size of the zip determines the size of the final bag. Here's what you need. You need some main fabric, your lining fabric, some zip tab fabric and a zip. You can use a continuous zip or a regular zip and the length of zip required is detailed in the written tutorial. It's recommended that you also use a zipper foot for part of the sewing, but this is not essential. And we have some optional items like a fabric glue pen, a fabric pen, or you can just use a pencil, and a chopstick, which I find very useful to push out corners. Now on to step two, which is to cut and fold your zip tabs and attach them to the zip. Now we need to take our zip tabs and with the insides of the fabric facing up, we need to fold in the ends by half an inch. And then fold in half. And press. And do the same for the other one. Now is the time to put the zip into the zipper tabs. So what you want to do is put the zip about half an inch into each side of the tab. Um, about half an inch inside the zip tabs at both sides. And then what you might want to do is pin it or even just clip it so you can take it over to your sewing machine. So we're just gonna sew along the tabs about three eighths of an inch or one centimeter in to secure the zip inside the tabs. So then I would put the needle down, give it a swivel Go back over it just to secure it a couple of times. Step three, cut the main fabric and the lining fabric. The measurements for these rectangles are described in the written tutorial. Step four, attach the main and lining fabric to the zip. We'll do each side one by one. So take a main fabric right side up, then take your zip and place it right side down. And then your lining right side down. And what you're gonna do is line up the zip with the edge of the fabrics and pin or clip it all together. If your lining fabric is really thick, then you can baste the zip onto the main fabric. So take a long stitch and you could secure that at the very, very edge with a long stitch just to hold it in place and then have your lining on top. Make sure that uh, the main fabric and the lining is in line with the zip, not, not necessarily the tabs. The tabs will probably come over the line depending on what kind of zip you use. 
and then we're going to sew with the 3 8 seam allowance one centimeter down to hold everything together. So you're going to want to change your foot on your machine to a zipper foot which looks like this. So what you should be able to do is run that zipper foot down with the edge of your zip zipper foot should be able to run along the edge of your fabrics and zip. And it means you'll sew a nice straight line close to the zipper teeth. When you're sewing and you reach the zipper pull, stop and insert the needle slightly and then lift up your presser foot and go under the fabrics and find that zipper pull and pull it to the other side of your foot. And then put this presser foot back down again and continue sewing to the end. So we're just going to press that in place. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side of the zip. So we'll go to the other side of the zip and we'll remember our zip attaching mantra, which is right side up, zip, face down, lining fabric face down and actually because we've got quite a few fabrics now involved I am actually going to take that over to the sewing machine and just baste that zip really close to the edge like just to hold it in place so we don't get a wonky zip so you don't need to do this but I'm just going to do a long basting stitch along this really close to the edge just to hold everything in place. So I would put your stitch length to say as five and then make sure you're completely matched together. And remember it's the edge of the zip against the edge of the fabric, not the tabs. It's just going to hold everything in place when we then put uh, the lining on top. So make sure we've got everything lined up again. Right, so make sure you remember to put your stitch length back to the normal one. And once again, you're going to be sewing with your zipper foot and you can usually use the zipper foot as a guide. If you run it along the edge of your fabric and zip then you'll have a seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimetre. So again when you reach the zipper pull you'll have to stop, insert the needle slightly, lift up your presser foot and under the fabric find that zipper pull, move it to behind your sewing foot and then put the presser foot back down and continue sewing to the end. Step 5. Top stitch both sides of the zip. Step six, sew the main fabric and lining fabric together. So what you can do here is, if things are going a little bit wonky, you can trim the edges of the fabric just so they all match up and it's going to make things a little bit easier for you. So now we move on to step six, where we're going to be putting the main fabric together and the lining fabric together. So main fabric together, lining fabric together, I'll swing on that side. Okay, and then what you want to do is put the seams together. 
So matching the seams together and then press open the seams. Now you can use an iron to press them open or what you can actually do is just put a tiny bit of glue under each seam and press it down like that. Just hold it for a couple of seconds and do that for each of your seams. Now this is very important, is you want to push that tab, you put the seams together, but you want to push that tab to the inside of the lining, okay, and put together, and then clip it or pin it. And you do the same to the other side, so we need that tab pushed to the inside of the lining. Line up your seams, pinch and hold it all together, and then pin it or clip it. Now you want to match your sides up. Quite useful to hold it up and give it a shake. And then pin or clip around the outside. So at which seams, we're going to sew all the way around, but we're not going to sew over the tabs, so we don't sew over the tabs. So we sew as close to, but not over the tabs. So what I find useful is to mark out with a pencil or a fabric pen a line, so you have a guide of where you're going to sew, so that you sew past the tabs, close to them, but not over them. And what you can do is continue that line down if you want. So you know your side's going to be nice and straight. And now we're going to sew all around the outside apart from a gap of about four to six inches at the bottom of the lining where you're going to turn the bag through later. So now we have the bag sewn all around the outside with the gap at the bottom of the lining to turn the bag later. So now we have the optional step seven, which you would do if you wanted to create a flat bottomed bag. So for small and medium bags, I would suggest you use a three quarter inch square, create a bit of card or a bit of paper which is three quarters of an inch square. And for larger bags, use a one inch square template. Place a square along the stitching of each corner, not the outside edge of the fabric, but the stitching. Then you can take your pencil or fabric pen and draw the outline of the square and repeat this for each of the corners.
and now cut out your four squares. Now we're going to take each corner and pull it open and put the seams together. Now at this point you can open the seams like that or what I actually prefer to do is push one seam to one side and the other seam to the other side then you can glue the seams down so we put a little bit of glue in there and then hold it closed for a few seconds and then you can add pins or clips just to hold that together Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing across there with a three quarters of an inch or a one centimetre seam to hold that together. So then when you go to the opposite corner, I guess you just need to, oh, we'll pull this open, yep. And you just need to make sure that you're going to fold that seam allowance to the, to the correct side. So put your seams together and then obviously you folded that that way so it has to sit flat so you have to fold this piece of seam that way and the other one the opposite way so again you can just glue these down And we'll just put some pins in to hold it in place. So we're going to do the same thing to the lining corners. then we're ready to take it across to our sewing machine and sew across each of these corners. So over at our sewing machine I've changed uh, the foot back from the zipper foot back to our regular foot and I've taken the arm off as well just, just makes it easier. On the smaller bags sometimes it's a bit tricky just to get that in place just make sure you get everything else out of the way. It's all sitting flat. Okay, and we'll do that for each of the four corners. Remove any pins and trim the seam allowance of the corners. The bottom of the lining bag and the main fabric bag will naturally form a rectangle shape but you might like to take that over to your iron and just give it a bit of a press to help it go into shape. Step 8. Finish. Turn the bag and sew the gap in the lining. If you skip step 7 i.e. you're not making a flat bottomed bag, then you will still need to trim the seam allowance all around and press. And then turn the bag through the hole at the bottom of the lining. And this is why it's so important for you to have left that zip open. push out your corners. The area with your tabs 
There we go, just push them through. Okay, that's almost us. We just need to close the gap in the lining bag. There we go, you can hand stitch it or machine stitch it. I find it quite useful to press this down and then you're able to machine stitch it quite easily across the gap. And then push that lining into the bag and push out all the corners.